Hi, this is Amr of the Gawad, and we're going to talk today about brachymetatarsia. Uh, what are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to describe the pathology and the clinical presentation of brachymetatarsia, and then we're going to speak uh, briefly about the treatment options for this condition. A good source that you can use in general for pediatric orthopedic uh, is this book written by myself and Dr. Naga. So what is brachymetatarsia? Brachymetatarsia is abnormal shortening uh, of the metatarsal, and uh, the most common metatarsal to be affected is the fourth metatarsal, as we're going to see in the example. It's basically much more common in females. Uh, uh, more than 25 to 1 of cases are in females, and more than half of the cases are bilateral, means affecting both feet. Most of these cases are isolated pathology, means that the uh, child is uh, only having this condition, which is uh, either unilateral or bilateral, uh, a shortening of his uh, metatarsal, which is usually the fourth metatarsal. However, some cases are associated with certain syndromes. Uh, these are rare syndromes like uh, pseudo uh, hypoparathyroidism or pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. Again, most of these cases are isolated pathology in which the child has uh, either shortening of the metatarsal in one side or on both feet. So what is the clinical presentation? Uh, first, uh, you have to assess the child as a whole to um, assess if the brachymetatarsia is um, an isolated pathology or it's part of a general condition. So look for uh, other skeletal dysplasias and see if this patient has a general condition uh, or uh, the brachymetatarsia is an isolated pathology. Uh, as we said before, this disease is much more common in females. Um, so most, most patients come uh, with concern of cosmetic appearance. So you'll find the girl is coming mainly because uh, of the cosmetic appearance. Uh, however, uh, some uh, uh, girls uh, present with pain. We call that trans transfer lesion or meta uh, metatarsalgia. And the pathology is that uh, because this uh, fourth metatarsal is short, uh, more stresses and more weight bearing is going through the uh, other surrounding metatarsal bone. So uh, there is more stresses on the surrounding metatarsal bone. So the patient start getting um, uh, pain into the uh, into that metatarsal area, and we call that transfer lesion. So it means that the stresses that was supposed to go through the fourth metatarsal is transferred now to the other metatarsal. So the patient will get uh, metatarsalgia or pain along the metatarsal head, and we call that a transfer lesion. Uh, some patient presents with toe deformity. We're going to see pictures for that, like cock up toe or claw toe. So let's see some uh, clinical pictures. So this is the right foot for uh, a patient, a female patient uh, at the age of 14. Uh, you can see here uh, her toes are aligned. Uh, there is no problem with the right side. However, if you see to the left side, uh, her fourth metatar uh, toe is short. Uh, that's because the fourth metatarsal bone, as you're going to see in the x-ray, is short. The toe itself looks uh, 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 equal length to the other. However, it's starting much more proximal or starting much more uh, uh, recessed position. Uh, so it looks here shorter. So uh, this is a brachymetatarsia of the fourth um, the tarsal bone. Uh, the metatarsal bone is short. Uh, the toe is starting at a more proximal position. So it looks here as a short toe. So this is the x-ray of the patient that I just showed you the picture. Here is the right foot and here is the left foot. You can see here the right foot is normal. And we call, we call that the parabolic arc. It means if you draw a line here uh, across the ends of the metatarsal head, you can see it forms an arc with the top of this arc at the second metatarsal. So if you draw a line here, you can see obviously all of them lies on that uh, uh, line. And then uh, this is the little, the first uh, ray will be a little bit recessed. Let's try to see here if we have the same arc. So if we see here, if we draw a line here, this fourth metatarsal will be much shorter than this line. So if you draw a line, the arc should be like this. So you have a line from the second to the fifth, and you can see here at the fourth, the head of the metatarsal is not on that line. It's much more proximal to this. So this x-rays show a short fourth metatarsal, and usually uh, in the literature it says uh, this shortening has to be less than five millimeter to be considered as brachymetatarsia. So you draw a line from here to here, and this line 
If you draw it here on the normal side, you'll see all the metatarsal head from the second to the fifth lies on that line. Here, on the, if you draw a line from the second to the fifth, it's only the third on that line. The fourth, it's much more recessed, much more uh, located approximately than uh, uh, that line. After we have discussed the clinical picture and the x-rays, let's talk about uh, the treatment of brachium metatarsium. Uh, Non-operative treatment is the main uh, treatment for this condition. As we have discussed, uh, many patients actually don't have lots of symptoms. Uh, and uh, those who complain of pain, you can try first the metatarsal pads. Uh, you can try orthotics. Uh, or you can try the wide uh, toe box. Uh, and these all measures uh, decrease the pain a little bit. It may not alleviate completely alleviate the pressure during toe off, as we have discussed with the transfer lesion. So if the patient have a transfer lesion, he has a pain over the fifth and the third metatarsal heads because he has a short fourth metatarsal head. Uh, these measures usually may decrease the pain but may not uh, completely alleviate the pain. So first try uh, either doing nothing or if the patient is in pain, try the metatarsal pad. It's like a small pad that can be uh, put under the metatarsal head. You can try orthotics, you can try wide toe box. However, uh, uh, as we have discussed, cosmesis is the most common cause of indication for surgery. Um, uh, some uh, literature suggests you should not be uh, doing surgeries for cosmesis and only do these for transfer lesion and metatarsalgia. Uh, if you would like to lengthen, there is two options. One stage technique, it means that you lengthen the uh, metatarsal acutely, you do the surgery, you lengthen uh, uh, the toe, or you can do the gradual lengthening as we're going to see. So as we have said, there is two uh, types of uh, lengthening, uh, either acute lengthening or gradual distraction, uh, as we're going to show. Uh, acute lengthening is less commonly used now. It was the uh, common method uh, before, in which uh, uh, the surgeon is going to cut the bone, distract the two ends, and apply a bone graft and fix that internally. Uh, uh, it's, as we said, less commonly done now, and uh, more and more we're using the gradual lengthening, as we're going to see. So we spoke about the first uh, method of treatment, which is acute lengthening. Let's speak now about the second method, which is gradual lengthening, depending on what we call distraction osteogenesis. Uh, so this is a patient of mine. Uh, she had a short fourth metatarsal. This is a brachymetatarsia. Uh, you can draw the line from the second to the fifth. This, this should, has, should be aligned with the third and fourth. However, here it's not aligned with the fourth, uh, as we have discussed before. So this is short fourth metatarsal or brachymetatarsia. We decided to do a gradual lengthening for her. So patient went to the surgery. You have two pins here in the proximal segment, two pins in the distal segment. And then we do the bone cut. You can see it here. This is called osteotomy. Uh, and through this uh, osteotomy, we're going to distract the bone and gradually forming a bone, which we call distraction osteogenesis. Uh, so here, the four pins were connected to the external fixator and this external fixator uh, has a method of gradually uh, distracting between these two pins and these two pins and when you gradually distract you're going to get bone here in the middle and that's um, a gradual lengthening of the fourth of the tarsal uh, so again here is the two pins here is the two pins here is the bone cut these four pins are connected with the external fixator and this external fixator has a, a, a mechanism to distract between uh, these two pins and these two pins. Uh, we usually go to about um, less than one millimeter a day. And this wire here is the wire to pin the fourth metatarsal uh, to avoid flexion contracture. It means that to avoid having the toe bends when you distract because of the, uh, when you distract the tendons will become tight. Uh, and uh, it may cause flexion deformity of the toe, so it's very important that you pin that toe uh, to avoid uh, this complication. So here is uh, the uh, foot after the end of the lengthening. You can see here is the osteotomy or, or where we did the bone cut. And this amount is the amount of the new bone that was formed. It's called regenerate. Um, and it was formed by the gradual distraction or what's called distraction osteogenesis. Uh, and you can see now here that the fourth metatarsal became uh, at the line between the second and fifth. So this is the correct length. So at that stage, we stop uh, lengthening and we allow the bone to heal for a while. And then and after that, we take the external fixator. Usually, we can take that external fixator in the clinic so the patient does not have to go to the OR. 
And, and here is the same foot after a few weeks from removal, the external fixator. You can see here uh, uh, the bone is getting stronger. Uh, here again, the, from here to here is the new bone or the regenerate. It's getting stronger and it's aligned now with the bone. And if you uh, draw a line from the second to the fifth, uh, you can see that the third and fourth are on that line, so this metatarsal now is at the correct length. So this, uh, this is the second uh, um, uh, way of lengthening these uh, patients, uh, which is the gradual lengthening, and this is the um, uh, type or the form of treatment that commonly used now. Thank you very much. All of my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before taking any decision. Thanks.